Welcome to Show Scale Modelings. This is part 9 of EMT Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC 1701E. The scale is 1 to 1400. In this part, I'm going to be concentrating on the Walton cells, getting them put together and um, placing the lights into them. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. So I'm starting off where I left off in part 8. I'm placing the sweet wrappers. Um, inside the uh, clear plastic parts. I do this as I've explained before to try and diffuse the lights a little bit um, and it gives it a more authentic feel, I feel anyway, uh, to the lights when, when they come through. So it shifts the the colours a, a little bit from the the red. Uh, it gives it a, a, a bit of warmth to the glow. So it's onto the, the walking themselves. Um, I've got to cut out a, a little bit um, of a groove here to receive the wires. So I'm just uh, measuring up the inner cell to the pylon and then I'll, I'll decide how, how much I'm going to be cutting out. And it's the same for the top of the cells. I've put on the clear plastic part um, on there and I'm just going to take my pencil and trace around it. And that way, um, uh, again, I'll know how much I've got to cut out, but it's important that I leave a lip on this uh, about, about one, two millimeters, uh, enough for the uh, plastic part to fit onto. Also, you don't want to remove it all and you, and have nothing for the um, next part to sit on. I'm using Revlon Color 08 Matte Black for this flash here. Now, originally I painted it in a medium grey or a dark grey. Um, and I think it should have been darker by all, all the reference photos that I looked at. So I'm opting for the black instead. And I'm using the same colour for the, just move my camera a little bit. I'm using the same colour for the back of the nacelle. There's uh, two little flashes of um, paint that run down uh, each uh, partition of this back piece. It's now time to cut off the um, excess plastic that I don't want. So I'm using my Dremel with the cotton death tool. And I'm, I'm just going to around it. Uh, it looks um, a bit of a mess at the moment. That's because the plastic melts and things like that. Uh, when, when you're using this, um, but as long as you, when you're doing it, you give yourself a little bit of room to for tidying up everything, it should be okay. And then I'll just take the excess off with my uh, hobby knife. Of course, you can use a sand and things like that. Um, it's whatever you you feel comfortable with. I'd, I'm not so worried about neat, neatness on this because you'll never get to see it. It's just the removal of the plastic so the light can come through. There's a little insert that goes in between these themselves. Um, that holds a, a light at the top, which um, isn't molded into the plastic. So I have to drill in the hole myself. So I've just used my hobby knife as a pilot hole to get started. Then I'll use my pin vise uh, just to uh, drill the hole. It's quite um, a, a deep part, so make sure you, your, uh, your drill bit is sticking out enough. Generally, when you're using these pin drives, you have your drill bit in as far as it can go to prevent it from uh, snapping and bending otherwise you go through a lot of drill bits but on, on this occasion you have to have quite a sticking out quite far uh, so that you can get the whole length of, of the part now if you haven't got a dremel you need to move the part the plastic these are size cutters that you use for taking your items off the sprue work just as well. You can just uh, cut along the edges and feather it so you've just got little um, strips of plastic uh, ready to be cut out with your hobby knife. You have to be careful though because um, one, if you slip too much you'll remove uh, an area where you don't want it to be removed and two, the actual, if it's a long piece you're cutting um, there's actually added pressure and it can warp the, the main piece. So I'll just be mindful of that when you're doing it like that. And now it's on to thinking about installing the light. So first of all, I've got the LED strip light and I'm placing it on a piece of plastic card. This just gives it a, a more secure uh, surface to work on. Technically, you don't have to do this, but I just prefer to have it on um, a solid piece before installing it. It also helps as well when you're soldering it in. It just gives you that solid base uh, to solder in. So um, as you can there, see there, and I'm placing in the insert now. Um, I did think about leaving that until later on, 
but um, one, I wanted to know exactly how much room I had with the lights. So I thought it was best to start installing these pieces now before I place in the lights so I know exactly what's going to be lit up with uh, the lights, but I need to add more lights and, and so on. Hence why I'm installing half of the items now. And it's the same procedure as I used previously to solder these. I'm just placing the solder dots onto the contact points initially. And then I'll actually solder in the uh, connecting wires to each point. And once the neutral's done, I will go on to the live connector. And all I'm doing here is heating up the soldering dot that I placed on and pushing the wire inside. Sometimes the solder will roll off if it's not contacted properly, uh, but it's absolutely enough to re-solder. And once they're connected, I'll just do a quick light test to make sure everything is working right. And I'm glad I did because the middle three aren't working. Uh, I must have blew them out. So I'm going to have to take this off and redo a new strip. And that will happen from time to time. Um, don't Try not to let it annoy you. These things do happen. All it means is I just connect the solder, just reheat the solder, take the wires off and do a new strip of LEDs and uh, get them to work. And this is why light testing is important because um, if you just put it all in, bang, forget to do the light test and you'll see that you've got a problem. Uh, depending on how far on you're in the build, you either have to backtrack it to where the problem started or if you do what I do, I light test every time I do something new to the wire, that way I know where the problem lies. And to make sure it's just this strip and nothing else, I'm just going to do a simple test here once again, just to make sure it's those uh, that strip that's broken. So I've replaced the strip, and this is the new strip on. And as you can see, as a light test, everything is actually working now. Now, in the back of the nacelle, so there's a beacon light. Um, again, the um, the opening is the hole is not there, so I'm having to drill it. Now, this uh, hole is actually in between the seam of the nacelle, so um, hence why I have clamped it together to drill the hole so I can get it as central as possible. And I've just finished fitting the second uh, nacelle lights, exactly the same way as the first one. This one worked first time around, so just a light test there to make sure everything's fine. So now it's time to place the lights inside. Now, ideally, I want this uh, strip of lights to go in between the, the seam. Uh, this is one of the advantages I have on a, a piece of plastic card as well. I can actually glue it into position. Uh, that way, uh, once I close up the uh, the nacelle, the, the light strip is actually in position already. Again, if you feel that you don't want to do this, it's not actually necessary. A lot of these things are just done how you feel them, how you feel it should go. There's no right or wrong way, it's just um, whatever you prefer to do. I prefer to do it this way, it's a little bit more work for myself, but um, um, I, I think it just makes it a little bit more stable. The tricky part is getting it all installed, of course, um, because the, the wires are coming out of the central part, it's buffing onto the uh, strip itself, so I'm having to angle the wires up, then uh, place the strip in. Now I'm going to hold this with some clamps uh, in place so it doesn't pop out. So I'm not 100% sure whether this is going to hold or not, but I think it will. Now I've been trying to do this without attaching the um, the half of the cell to the pylon, but that's not going to work, uh, I've decided. Everything will just flop off. So I'm going to take a risk here and join up the half of the cell only to the pylon. Now this could be a big risk and I may end up with major gaps in it. Um, so I'm taking a chance here, um, but I think it'll work, but I'm not 100% sure. I've dry fitted these and they fit, they fit really well. Um, they pop hard against the pylon um, and as long as it doesn't slip out, um, yeah, it should be okay. But uh, I'm a little bit concerned whether this will work or not. Now, if you're not comfortable doing it this way, you can get the lights in through the top once the nacelles are closed up. The plastic that I removed for the clear part, you can actually fit in your um, LEDs that way. 
but that will require more wire uh, connection because you'll be uh, wiring it up outside the ship and um, you'll have to try and stuff it all back in and that may cause problems with um, breaking of connections so um, uh, I think this is po probably the best way to go uh, just fingers crossed it works so now I'm just placing on the clamps trying to make the, the light strip uh, stable now I haven't caught any of this out on the video um, because um, as I said I'm not sure it's going to work and if it is if it does go wrong you, you can see why it's gone wrong but each time I place a clamp, uh, uh, clamp on it a little bit shifts out of position and um, it um, didn't quite work with the clamp so um, I've dumped the idea with the clamp so I've secured one end uh, of the light strip and now I'm closing up the actual other half of the pylon now you can see um, not the pylon itself sorry you, you can see the top opening there that's where you can squeeze the LED strip in if you need to um, I think it'd be more trickier that way hence why I, I tried it the other way it is working to a certain extent uh, the clamps are pulling it away from the pylon a little bit so I'm going to have to put that under um, some more clamps just to get everything stabilized I'll probably have to put uh, a heavier clamp on here so uh, one of my F clamps may have to go on the middle section just to make sure um, everything is on the um, clamps here may just pop off as well so I'll, I'll have to keep an eye on that in the course of the drying process and as I'm closing this up, this is Bill End Part 9. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds? If you subscribe to the channel, and please do so, hit that notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to date, not only with this build, but all my future builds as well, of course. Hit the like button. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. And of course, you can share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.